Okay. I just want to welcome everybody. Wow, what amazing night we had last night. Oh, man, that was so good. Um, I just want to welcome all the people online, too, tonight that are joining us. And uh, we just love the presence of the Lord. I just wanted to share a scripture really quick. I was just asking the Lord. And he's got me stuck on mountains this week, I tell you. So, yeah, so this comes from Isaiah 2, and it says, The message Isaiah got regarding Judah and Jerusalem. And the Lord really instantly sort of just highlighted Judah because it's praise. It's them coming up with praise into the mountain. And Jerusalem, of course, is the foundation of peace. And then it says, there's a day coming when the mountains of God's house will be the mountain, the mountain. It says the mountain, solid, towering over all the mountains. All nations will, will river toward it. This is from the Message Bible. And it says, people from all over set out for it. They'll come and they'll say, come, let's uh, climb Mount God's mountain. Go to the house of the God of Jacob. He'll show us the way he works so we can live the way we're made. I thought, wow, that's a neat. And it says, Zion's the source of, revela of the revelation. God's message comes from Jerusalem. He'll settle things fairly between the nations. He'll make the things right between many peoples. They'll turn their swords into shovels, their spears into hoes. Nor, no more will nation fight against nation. They won't play war anymore. Come, family of Jacob, let's live in the light of God. And I just felt, you know, we've always used that as a sort of millennial scripture, but I felt like the Lord saying, Zion is the source of revelation. So as we come up to that mountain, we're going to get revelation. And that the revelation that we receive as we come up to Mount Zion come up into the heavenlies, that that revelation is going to change nations. It's going to change the atmosphere in your cities. It's yeah. going to, we'll have that revelation and we'll bring it back into the earth and we'll declare it into the earth. So I just, everybody, if you want to stand tonight and let's just thank the Lord. Father, we just thank you, God, that we come up to Mount Zion tonight, God. Whoa. Yeah, God, that you release, God that revelation to us. Father, as we stand before you in that holy place and we cry, holy, holy, God, that we can release that into the earth, Father, that wisdom and knowledge of who you are and who we are. In Jesus' name, whoa, amen. So there's freedom in the house tonight. There's freedom in the house tonight Cause Zion's gonna praise Zion's gonna praise And the revelation's gonna flow out from the throne Revelation's gonna flow out from the throne Is anybody ready? Is anybody ready? Better, better that's better. Come on, let's praise him.
ship deeper than before. Free. 
I saw the Lord just take his foot and kick it open. Come on, walk through that door of hope, of freedom. Hope and freedom of knowing the life in Christ. Whoa. Jesus reigns in this place. Called my name. 
I've been born again to your family. Your blood flows through my
glory's gonna fall. Show me. 
There's a river of healing in this place. There's a river of healing in this place. The glory, the glory river flowing right through the altar. Flowing down from the 
show spots in your lungs. Just wave at me. Where are you? I see it. Stir the water. Burn it away, Lord. Stir the water. Burn it away, Lord. Oh, turn on the light. Turn on the light. Turn on the light. Dark spots removed in the name of Jesus. Dark spots removed in the name of Jesus. Oh, 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 stir the water, 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 water. I see arthritis, 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 arthritis being freed up by the fire of God. Fire of God, fire of God, fire of God. You move it, just move, move wrist, move your wrist. Who is it with the wrist? Just move it, feel the heat of God. It's the fire of God on your wrist right now in the name of Jesus. There's healing waters in this place. There's healing rivers in this place. There's healing glory in this place. Oh, he's stirring the waters. He's stirring the waters. He's stirring it up. Whoa. Holy 
Come on, lift your hands into the glory. Yeah. I'm telling you, I see it in the spirit. Arthritis, somebody in the right knee, somebody in the left wrist. Right now, the heat of God coming on you. I still see those x-ray. We just call the fire God to come. Fire God, come now. Come on, if you need a healing, just receive it. It's in the glory. It's in the glory.
Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we receive, we receive a miracle. And it's all for your glory, Lord, that your name would be glorified through signs and wonders. Oh, do what you, only you can do, Lord. Come and do what only you can do. Father, we pray tonight, each and every person here, regardless of their age or their background, regardless of their past, 
that each and every person here would have an encounter with Jesus today. Would have an encounter with your awesome presence. Lord, it's our desire that we would leave this place tonight changed forever. That you would do something in our hearts that only that only you can do. We love your presence, Lord. We love your presence. We love your presence. So tonight, corporately, we just welcome you, Holy Spirit, just to come and have your way. And we just, we don't really pretend to know anything. But we do know this, that we're really hungry for more, 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 more of you. And we just, we just surrender tonight. We just surrender everything that we are, everything that we are to, to whatever you want to do, God. We just say, come and have your way tonight. Just come and have your way tonight. Lord, we, 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 we pray that your, that your kingdom would come tonight, Lord. That your will would be done and established in our lives individually and even corporately, God. That, that heaven would come down and, and even kiss this spot where we stand, where we sit. That heaven would come down tonight. That we would have an encounter with heaven tonight. That we would have an encounter with your beauty and your majesty and your, and your glory. So we just welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come and have your way. Just come and have your way. Would you just use your, your own words tonight to say, heaven come. Holy Spirit, come. Come and have your way tonight. Come and have your way tonight. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, we're available. We are available. We're available. We're available. We've cleared our agenda. Yeah, we've we've cleared our our, our own our finite expectation. And we say, just come and do whatever you want to do. It's it's your agenda, Lord. It's your agenda tonight. It's your agenda. Your plans, oh God. Your plans, oh God. Let your plans be established on the earth tonight. Father, let your ways be established on, on the earth tonight. We honor you tonight, oh Lord. We honor you tonight, King Jesus. We honor your name tonight. We honor your authority tonight. Yeah, we honor you tonight, King Jesus. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus!
fragrance of the Lord would be coming off of us tonight. That we would be like incense. I'm one of the pastors here at Seattle Revival Center, and we have so many churches and leaders and ministries here this weekend, and, and, and it's our heart that you would just feel at home here, right. that, that you would just feel like you're, you're with family here. So, so welcome to Seattle Revival Center. You are absolutely loved of the Lord, and we're so excited to have you here, uh, to have you here tonight. Well, we're doing things a little bit different tonight. Uh, we got some announcements because, uh, well... We still got more to go to this thing. How many of you have actually been here um, every single night since Sunday night? Whoa! Awesome, awesome, awesome. God bless you. Well, Jeanette, what do we got going on? Everyone, welcome Jeanette tonight. Come on. something cool and then we're off and running um, yeah so uh, if you, welcome <laughs> wait a minute I gotta there's just something that happens right here I don't know what to say about it um, 
Okay, so if you brought kids with you tonight, we're really glad you did because the presence of the Lord is, is full and, and they will enjoy themselves. What we do ask is that you keep them by you and keep them entertained, but keep them right by you entertained and not out in the halls and all because it can get a little bit uh, crazy out there and we want to make sure everybody's safe and sound. So even if they need to go to the restroom, if you would take them and then come on back to your seats, that would be very helpful. Um, I just wanted to remind you all that we have a, a prayer team I'm a prayer ministry team in this house that's been trained and been around a while in the Lord and and we um, really take seriously the presence of God that's here and the administrations of that so we ask that you would um, not uh, we know you're all able ministers of the gospel right you're all capable of pre praying for for anyone but we're asking that in the house that you not that you not pray for someone unless you're part of the ministry team or that you not receive prayer unless it's uh, uh, someone who's uh, on the ministry team. <laughs> Sorry, got distracted. <laughs> I saw something, that was cool. Um, Whoa! Oh, okay, so, uh, okay. If you are not receiving our weekly email, we have some great things coming up in the fall. Um, and, and it's gonna be a really good fall. And in the first, on January, we're going to have a West Coast Rumble. We're going to have our own West Coast Rumble conference here. And then in February, we're going to have a declaration conference. So you're going to want to keep up. And um, there, we have an Apple of Your Eye conference coming up in September with Justin Abraham and Godfrey Bertel and John Scotland. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we'd love to get a plug in if you want to keep track of what's going, what God's doing here and where you might um, want to, yeah. <sighs> okay, take your breath. So. Tomorrow morning, Charlie Sham is ministering. It's, it's an awesome Friday morning to come on out and just get full of the Holy Ghost and power. So I encourage you to come out. You have that look that says, oh, no, it's all right. Um, sorry. And um, one, other, one other thing. You know what? Um, there's a lot of uh, really awesome um, product and materials out in the, uh, in the cafe area. And, and I just wanted to say about that is, you know, ministers of the gospel, those who are full of, the, of what God has poured through their life, their only desire is to give it out to as many people as they possibly can. So that's why the product, that's why books, that's why tapes, because the body of Christ is in need of the material and there's no way a person who's carrying messages like are the ministers that come through here and a lot of them in our own home here, our own house, can possibly impart it to everybody everywhere. So the concept of uh, the books and all of that is, has nothing to do with a business. It has to do with kingdom business. So I really encourage you. I would be, would be really surprised if you looked at that whole table that there wasn't be something that God would speak to you that was really something of, of your own heart that you're looking for, and you can find it out there. So I just encourage you, before the week's over, if you're here the whole time or if you're here tonight, just check it out and see. And... Um, and that's it. So t tonight, all I wanted to say about ministry time is we just did ministry time. So we sort of flipped it all because all the Lord said, when, what do I say about ministry? He said, just say, everything you need is in the glory. So that's pretty much what we've already heard. And, um, and so that's what it's past. We're going to... Um, we're going to take a minute now and rearrange right here so Pastor Mahesh can come up and sit and be comfortable and um, to minister, okay? Is that good? We're not taking an offering right now. Have you noticed? Yeah, you'll find out why later. <laughs> so why don't, whoever's going to do that table, sorry, I probably should have um, moved sooner. That's the drinking and stuff that does that. <laughs> um, did you? I want to say thank you, Jeanette. Man, I, I just love the gift of administration because it's not necessarily one of my top three gifts. And, um, and so I just, I just want to honor tonight um, Jeanette Werman for doing such an incredible job in facilitating all the different speakers and itineraries. Come on. Yeah, come on. We, you know, we had like uh, 32 speakers this week, all flying. I'm just kidding, not, not that many, but this whole week we've had people coming and going and hotels and accommodations and personal assistance and, and so, uh, so much. I also want to honor um, Ed Fish and all the guys that have been helping us with parking this week. I don't know if they're, come on, let's just give them a big hand. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I also want to uh, honor, we had 40, how, how big? 
We have 45 volunteers from Seattle Revival Center um, uh, volunteering this week and working with Jeanette. So let's say thank you to all of our volunteers that have been making this possible. Absolutely. I also just want to honor um, our sound men and our media guys. Absolutely. Um, it's... It's, cre it's incredible because you can have a building like, like this with 300 people. Uh, uh, we know that for sure last night. But another 5,000 people watched the service last night um, online. And so it's just, it's just a different kind of era. It's just, a, it, it's just, it's just remarkable the amount of influence um, that, 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 that you can have because of, because of media. So I just want to say thank you to Fred on the camera, to our sound guys, to our media guys uh, that have just been going for it uh, th this, whole, this whole week. Love you guys. You guys are, you guys are champions. And... And, um, and, and stuff. Well, anyways, you're, you're, in, you're in for a real treat uh, tonight. Um, it's such an honor to have Mahesh, Pastor Mahesh Shavda uh, in the house. I, I said last night, this is like, this is really like a dream come true because Pastor Mahesh and, and, and Pastor Bonnie Mahesh, these guys are just such champions. These are such, um, these are such generals in the faith. And, and you can already uh, read um, the stories about these guys uh, uh, in, in various books that they haven't even written. There's already been books written about their life, and they're still alive. Isn't that awesome? I mean, that's, I mean, uh, isn't, I mean isn't, that, isn't that great? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So these guys, these guys have, have been, these guys have been, doing this stuff and these guys are really celebrated ones on the earth and and it's such an honor to have uh, this general this father in the faith somebody that's been modeling what it looks like um, to walk in the glory to love the presence of the Lord and to love um, uh, the bride of Christ and um, and I also love that he's a pastor <laughs> Isn't that, is, I mean, I just think that, I think that's so cool. So would you join me in welcoming, welcoming tonight Pastor Mahesh Shavda to Seattle Revival Center? Come on. Glory. No? Yes? Yes? No? Yay! <laughs> In the future, I think, when little babies are born that have a call of God, they will already have this equipment from the Lord. And when they have a little speaking thing and you deliver the baby, you could say, you have a call of God. <laughs> I wish it was, t I had a staples system to my stomach. Where, wherever I was going that I didn't have to put it on, it would be there. Anyway, it's such a joy to be at Seattle Revival Center with Pastor Darren and Andrea Start and the whole team here. It's, it was wonderful to see you in action last night. And such a joy to meet people personally. I love being able to pray and lay hands on people individually and see them eye to eye and see the, the glory stuff working. Um, yeah, we're going to get in the Word. You may turn to Ephesians 3. We'll begin there and see where the Lord takes us tonight. Um, at the end of this service, I want to say, I want to, uh, we'll take some time to sign books I had said last night we would do that but I couldn't pray for everybody and then sign books it's I could 
one, sometime the glory will have us, help us where we'll be split and one of us will stay here and the other part go do things with each other. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's lots of our stuff that you, again, like Darren explained or Jeanette, that um, this mat- material is so that you can be discipled in the glory. You can be discipled in how the Holy Spirit moves. Uh, it's just, just like being able to be with that person. I had the privilege of being around great servants of God, especially Brother Derek Prince, who was my mentor and teacher for about more than 24 years. And uh, I served him, got to serve and follow all over the world with him and ministered together. So you learn a lot right there on a day-to-day basis. I just wrote uh, an introduction for one of his books just this last month on communion. And we lived this out like I was, I remember his, he was a great teacher, one of the, the, perhaps the premier Bible teacher of the last hundred years. And as we went to different places, either Pakistan or Zambia or Israel, uh, he was the senior Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know. (laughs) (laughs) And I was the young Jedi. So, but I remember we'd have a morning meeting, we'd break uh, bread, we would have lunch with pastors, and then we would retire for the afternoon. And invariably, as we would retire out here around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, wherever in the world we were, almost regularly, there would be a knock on my door. There would be this great servant of God in his full pajamas, (laughs) bottom and top, standing with the communion elements and saying, well, Bash, are you ready to take communion now? And he didn't matter, it didn't have to be Sunday, it could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But he loved what communion meant, what you got from the elements. And, uh, and so I was mentored in honoring what this meant and discipled in it. I was around that sermon and saw it in action. So, but the next best thing is to be able to read about it and be discipled by that. So these are tools of discipleship. Anyway, uh, so this, our latest book, The Power of the Cross, Epicenter of Glory, by Bonnie and myself. Um, It's an amazing blend of giftings we have. What what I have, she doesn't have what I, what she had. I mean, it's, it's like we blend together there, and it's great to have a teamwork like that. Um, but we waited almost all our lives to, to really exalt the Lord in his, the glory that's in the cross of Jesus. So that's our latest. Darren, have I given you this book? So I will, I will sign that book over it. Bless you. Uh, this is everything we know about the he- uh, healing ministry in this book called The Hidden Power of Healing Prayer. But it's everything. The commission you and going, starting to do this stuff. Who doesn't have this book? I'll give you the one in the red coat. If you have a red coat, you can bless you. Last night I gave out my CD, Healing from on High. And uh, this is the other one. I've not done too many, I may do. Where the word comes alive. And I, there was a day, some time back, when Bonnie was out there ministering on the road. I was at home. And on a Saturday... 
and I heard a noise and I looked and an angel appeared right before me. Not vision. Surreal. And he was the, he was within the a pillar, living pillar of glory. And he came with and the word was swirling around him in all languages that are ancient and modern. It was swirling around and it was living with the word of God and yet the angel had come from the presence of the glory. And and the word was alive and I could pick that word and it would become alive for me. And uh, his uh, and he was smiling. He was young. And then out of the presence, then he called, looked at me and smiled, and he said, How big is your chair? I said, What? How big is your chair? And it's from Psalms. Basically, we're saying, God is enthroned on the praises of his people. The bigger the chair we provide, the bigger the throne and the bigger the throne the greater the authority that is manifested in us and through us so anyway the presence stayed all and it just penetrated the whole house so Sunday evening Bonnie came back from the ministry trip she and her helpers and the moment she stepped inside the house she could smell the fragrance the glory and she knew, she immediately looked at me and said, <laughs> An angel came, didn't he? And I said, Yes. <laughs> she pointed at me. I know where he came from. He came from the Revolutionary War. And I remember that when the angel came, I heard the music uh, Come, thou almighty king. Help us thy praise and sing. And that whole melody was circling around. And she said, that angel came from the Revolutionary War. Well, we looked up the first mention on Google of uh, uh, Come Thou Almighty King. The first mention was, during the Revolutionary War, the, the patriots were surrounded by uh, this church. Patri- uh, the British mercenaries and Hessians invaded this church and commanded the people of the church to sing, which they could legally, sing God Save the King, king because they were under the British command, the, under the King of England. And they all stood up and the musician started singing but instead of singing God save the king they started singing come thou almighty king help us thy praises sing anyway so he came from that period so his presence stayed and uh, anyway the, the word that was around him swirling it's like penetrated inside and so I all that I could, that he quickened for me, I could remember very clearly. And I shared with it, with music, so that's enthroned. And I'm going to tell you more uh, about it, that I'll tell you a specific young man who came out of coma. I gave this to, I'm going to take this, this is your prescription, play it over your son. And he woke up. He had been given. They were going to take him off the machine. In fact, you met him, Heather, Antonio. He was in an accident in Atlanta, Georgia. His grandfather is a bishop there. And uh, the whole family was in a horrible accident. And everyone came out safe except this 14-year-old boy named Antonio. And... So they said, he's brain dead. We need to take him off the life support. And by the end of the week, I was coming to Atlanta. So 
the bishop, his grandpa said, we don't pull the plug until we ask the servant of God. He's coming to at last. So they said, we won't let them pull the plug until you say he's dead. Oh, how would you like to be put in that place? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying is that you, about, I may talk a little bit about the glory bubble tonight. And how you stay in the bubble of glory. Our, we had a we had a time in the glory bubble with Steve Swanson two weeks ago. <laughs> but as you stay in that atmosphere, you you are alive with the word you want to get impartation where in that atmosphere that's around you, you are not so much, you are in the world, but you are of the glory. And you are connected, you are discipled in that. And God will start using you because you're congruent in the glory to the presence of the Shekinah. And uh, anyway, so I, I happened to be ministering and then they said, we are uh, thinking of pulling the plug. They're telling us he's dead. And as they came within that context of what I say, there is a place that you steward your relationship with the Lord such that when people get within that vicinity, that zone of glory, suddenly I could see Antonio in a vision. And I said, no, Antonio is not brain dead. He's going to school. There, I see him in the vision. <laughs> so that I, I gave the mama this, the play that over him for the next two, three days. Sure enough, on the third day, Antonio woke up. So, anyway, glory to God. We had some sweet testimonies. I don't, these are not all of them, but some of them. Susan von Kluck, is it Susan? Where are you? Wave your hand. Oh, there they are. She said, I had an encounter with God in the garden of his heart, I burst forth out of a beautiful lotus blossom. Last night, my heart said, I see you need to, uh, need to study as a lotus blossom. I see you as a lotus blossom. And you need to study the lotus. How about that? Anyway, God had already told her she was a... So, just a vision that I had for her. Uh, Brett and Janelle. Where are you, Brett? Janelle, are you here? They had a whole bunch of kids. Janelle. She said, I saw you at Texas the Blades in Dallas. You received a word about ladies who have a difficult time conceiving. That was me and my husband. We had only one daughter but couldn't get pregnant. So Brother Mahesh prayed for me and that exact weekend I got pregnant. <laughs> I had nothing to do except just pray. Uh, Evangeline Grace was born. We have now, we are four daughters and one son. Glory. So, who needs a miracle breakthrough? Glory to God. All right, yeah. Come on, I'll give you this one. And there are a few more up there at the book table. All right? Bless you. What's your name? Nancy. Huh? Nancy. Nancy. Bless you, Nancy. All right. So, let's see the word just floating around us. It's living. I saw the word in ancient languages just 
circling in the glory around the angel. All right. Ephesians 3, I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. It says, verse 16, May he, the Lord, grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory. So it's from the treasury of the glory. So that you may be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit. So God wants to strengthen you, reinforce you with the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. With him indwelling your innermost being and personality, may Jesus Christ, through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. So your roots go down deep in love. So that is, I, I often, I, some of talk about the holy triangle. It's my, my language, okay? It's, it's not, I mean, I'm, don't put it as theology, it's just my revelation. That you will, that three important words that you need to have a revelation and impartation from is, one is, we often, as we who, have been touched by the revival glory. We know the word dunamis. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit come upon you. And uh, there's someone who is watching us on the web. And you have, have you ever had some paralysis on one side of your body? And the Lord's glory is touching you right now. So uh, receive that. Anyway, may... so. The one, one word that we know, dunamis. Say dunamis. dunamis. Say power. power. So that's Jesus saying, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit come upon you. And then the other word is exousia, which is authority. All authority is the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ, says Matthew 28. All authority has been given unto me. Therefore, go. That means you become ambassadors and emissaries of the authority of Jesus Christ. It's not your authority or mine. It is the authority of Jesus Christ. So it's on the basis. Often people depend on power, but power is not the only thing. It is important that we balance power with authority. You've got to have a revelation of authority as you, Jesus, has all authority. Okay? And therefore you have total confidence that you can go into every territory God opens for you to in the authority of Jesus Christ. And his complete work, it gives you authority. He gives you authority. You don't give it yourself. You are a person, therefore... Under authority. Yes. And that Roman soldier had great revelation. And Jesus commend him. That he said to Jesus. Now Jesus. I'm a man under authority. And you, I can say to a soldier go. And he will go. And you also. Uh, uh, you know. That you also have a man. You are under the father. And you have awesome authority across the galaxies. Anyway. So you have authority from the Most High God. Jesus gives you authority. And then the third aspect is agape. It's love. You, that may you be abiding, dwell, abide, make your pump in your, may he make a permanent home in your hearts and you may be rooted in the love, deep. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. So you cannot, in these three aspects, you should not, you can receive the revelation and make it your own. That you cannot be uprooted from this love. And it is the love energy, often the power, the energy flows connect, connected 
with the love of God. When you have love, power will flow. Often people miss that. And so uh, that is a catalyst for power to flow. If there is no love, power doesn't flow. It'll, it'll stop after a while at least because this, often there is, a, uh, the, uh, there is always the dark side of the force. And <laughs> legalism, religious legalism can take over and all that. And it hinders the flow of the anointing. Therefore, then we can go on. That you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth of this love. That you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. So that's where you come to nitty gritty of things. You, God, you know, is the constructing you here that you cannot function just having a head knowledge. And people say, okay, yeah. And one of the covenant names of God is Jehovah Rapha. And, uh, and the other name of God is Jehovah Sabaoth. And then after I have written down all these notes, hey, I know it. I know it. That's good. Great. <laughs> Give me some more. And I would just, <laughs> once you start the adventure of really following the Lord, you realize taking good notes <laughs> is not the key. It's having a revelation that it has become you, your. So you, it is not just mere knowledge, but it is knowledge mixed with experience for yourselves. And you may you get an impartation. So it becomes real. Yes. It is not theory. And that's where often the spirit of religion comes to steal from us. Where we become in you know, orthodoxy, legalism. And you, you say, okay, oh, I know about that. So I've been there, done that, teach me some more. And you would say, <laughs> No. You cannot even say boo to a junior demon. That's... So, I remember two major city centers of sorcery in the Congo and used to be called used to be called way back, more than 100 years ago, the Belgian Congo, because it was a colony of Belgium. And then the French had a little bit north, the French Republic of Congo. And then the British had, the Portuguese had Angola, and then South Africa had been influenced by British. Anyway, so we are talking about that part of Africa. Congo was called the heart of darkness. Joseph Conrad wrote a book called The Heart of Darkness. So we, Bonnie and I, somehow, as uh, we, on our, my first crusade in the Congo, I may conclude maybe with sharing that or the next time I come, I'll share it with you. But uh, the prime minister, uh, when he heard what was happening, he had me come to his palace. And Prime Minister first said, you're a man of God, I just want to tell you, I need a counsel. And I have this, 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 I've gone to Europe, I've gone to America, I don't have any relief. Do you have any idea? What? I said, respectfully, Prime Minister, you got demons. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's how I began a conversation with the Prime Minister. <laughs> and then his wife came to my service the next day. She, he said, can you pray for my wife? I said, not right now. I 
may she come stand with the other, mostly peasants, you know, in a sense, uh, the poor people. They were all lined up, about 5,000. And she, the prime minister's wife was right there. For 14 years she had been trying to conceive and have a baby. And that was a big deal there in the Congo. And uh, I said, I'll pray for you, but just get in line with the others. And so she came in. It, was, it, was, it had rained, it was muddy in a field in, the, in Kinshasa, Congo. And she stood and I laid hands on her. And Next year, I flew in to Kinshasa. There was, the, they stopped the airplane way away from the main doors. They said, there is an honored guest we want to receive, the prime minister wants to receive, and then the plane can come all the way. And then the, we all got frustrated. I said, I want to get off the plane, but there's an annoying person on this plane. <laughs> the captain says, Dr. Mahesh, job doc, can you come? The prime minister has sent his limousine for you. <laughs> and he wanted me to be among the first to, to know. In the Congo, I mean, he as they took me to the VIP place, and there was him and his wife and his new baby. And he was. So, anyway, he made it possible... You may know there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff about diamonds and the trade of diamonds and other things. And in certain parts of this region, you can just scratch a few inches of the ground and there are diamonds. And so they had a very tight, secure thing that people from other countries could not go into the interior. And but he gave me an internal passport. Bonnie and I could travel where nobody, no other foreigner could go there. And we held, therefore we held evangelistic outreaches there in the Congo. But some of these centers were major centers of sorcery, where sorcery and sorcerers and witch doctors are the ones who kind of rule the culture there. And people are terrible, terrified that they would put a curse on them. And so when I brought the name of Jesus, it really, there was a manifestation of the struggle between light and darkness. And in that context then, you will realize what a difference. The gospel of light. I am the resurrection and the life. What a difference Jesus makes. And that every time when you name the name of Jesus, you're declaring war on the kingdom of darkness. And every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord. So I remember visiting the city of Mujumai. And uh, the, that was one of the centers, two major centers, Mujimai was a center of sorcery. So I've, over several days, I proclaimed Christ. And thousands came to the Lord. So the, there were, the sorcerers, they realized they were losing money, that people were not going to come to them to put curses on situations and hire them. So they were angry. So they sent the chief sorcerer to put a curse on me. And I didn't know, and I usually on Thursday or Friday, I would line up all the people who needed lay on of hands. I would say, you come on this day and I'll lay hands. Now, so I've been doing that for many years. Um, so there were about, a, you know, about four or five thousand people lined up on this day. But right in the middle of those people lined up was the chief sorcerer of that region. And 
he had power. And he had come to put a curse on the servant of God. So I go, I didn't know anything about it. I just started praying and going down the line. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, bless him, bless him. And then I came to this very tall African gentleman. And as I came here, you could feel the evil just stuff happen. And voices were coming out of him that were human, animal, and something else. And there would be, I don't want to tell you, I mean, it just make a noise. But it was, it just, and he was, basically he was putting his curse on me. Well, the local pastors knew who this guy was. But they were so afraid that he would turn on them and put a curse on them. That they, to, they did not tell me anything. <laughs> so I was going down the line. Lord bless him, bless him. I came to him and he was going. <laughs> and his eyes had turned and backwards. And, and I could. I feel my hair was going. Woo. And I had clear discernment. I said, this man's got troubles. <laughs> so, I just said, Lord, bless him. <laughs> and suddenly, there was power against power. And his body flung over the heads of but several, but six or seven rows of people. And he went flying through the air, almost about 25 feet or so far. I mean, he floated over the heads of the people and smashed down. Boom! And I didn't know what was happening. I said, Lord, be gentle. And he banged. And then uh, um, he was humiliated in the eyes of all the people. He immediately tried to get up and he could not. And it was like the Lord said, my servant is down there. Angel, go down there and sit on that man. And uh, it was like a big angel sat on that and he could not move. So I went up to the pastor stand where I could get a drink of water and uh, was talking with them and saw the sorcerer. I found out who it was that told me and he came up and they said he could not get up until where the pastors talked to him. He was on the ground until he confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So when he came towards me, he started trembling. And then he told the other pastor, he said, I know spirits. I'm the head sorcerer here. The spirit over this man is greater than any spirit I have ever seen. That's the Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, huh, Authority. All authority has been given unto me, Jesus says. Therefore go. Know this. I pray for all of you, for pastors, leaders, all of you. When you are asked to go visit a hospital and someone has a major infirmity or they are dying of cancer, they say, well, they've got doctors have given three, four days. Know that as you go, you're on assignment from the King of Glory. That you have been given authority over every serpent and scorpion, yes. over every power of the enemy. So I'll give you one more example. 
that I was, then I, a year later, I was in the city of Kananga. And uh, that was even a bigger center of sorcery for centuries. And there was a special tree that had been recognized as the sorcerer's tree. And when I held the evangelistic outreach, the crusade in Kananga, the Lord spoke to me and said, the sorcerer are, are gathering on this side a few miles away. Bind them as you pray for this people and proclaim my word. So I just said, in the name of Jesus, I bind every power of witchcraft. And then I started proclaiming the word. Well, on the other side of town, where the sorcerers were meeting, putting a curse on us, when I said, I welcome the Holy Spirit, fire came from the sky onto this special magic sorcerer's tree and started burning it from the top down. And I think they may have a picture of it. Is there? See, if you'll notice, it burned from the top down. There's not, nobody has burned it, put a fire from the bottom up. This fire came from the sky and started burning. And it temporarily blinded all the eyes of the sorcerers. And they could not see again until they repented and received Jesus Christ. So, two years ago, Bonnie and I were in Tübingen, Germany. And a beautiful African girl came up to me and just jumped on me and gave me a big hug and said, you're my papa. You're my papa. And I looked at Bonnie and I said, <laughs> I have no knowledge of this. And uh, so, and she said, my name is Irene Kaniki. And my grandfather was the chief sorcerer who when you came his eyes were blended and he saw I mean they saw the, the tree burn and he came to Jesus when you came to Kananga and I am the granddaughter my, my, he, came, he turned his life to Jesus and my mama was a Christian and she came we immigrated to Germany and Irene Kaniki, I think you may have her picture, is the granddaughter of the sorcerer who came to Jesus. And she is one of the leading physicians of Tübingen, Germany, and has a special, she's very gifted. But just think, the glory of the Lord releases potential in every family. Jesus saying, came to set the captives free. And I sense the Lord is commissioning many of you here tonight in the glory to carry the authority and the blessing of the King of glory the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. that all authority, say authority. authority. Say dunamis. dunamis. Power. Power. And love. And love. So, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, and I, I've seen, I, I really sense prophetically 
that the, the season, there is a shift in the season that once again, the Lord, there is been a pause and now there are waves that are being stirred up. I can sense them of the waves of glory coming to visit his church and empower his end time army of God to have you see awesome signs and wonders and miracles and manifestations of his glory. So the other word that I felt the Lord was emphasizing for me was that this is a headline I read just at the beginning of May that uh, at the end of April this year, the beginning of May, that there was, we had been for the last 17 years, major portions of the United States were all, had been in drought. But that they officially declared as of the end of April, beginning of May, that overall, the nationwide drought of the last few years is over. That the drought was over. Say, the drought is over. Now, I know that in a temporarily in Seattle, you have had a little pause. And... <laughs> But I want to declare over you, over each of the families here, over your children, over your finances, over family relationships, that the drought is over. For every church, every believer, the drought is over. Say, the drought is over. And declare it over your family. The drought is over. Declare it over your children. The drought is over. Declare it over your finances. The drought is over. And you find, as it says in the book of Joel, chapter 1, chapter 2, that when God restores the former rain and the latter rain, that as the drought is broken, you hear also Elijah, that as Israel had been in drought for three and a half years, that he declares, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And it had not yet happened, and yet he, by faith, was hearing it prophetically, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Say, I hear, I hear the, sound the sound of abundance of rain. The, of rain. the, drought, is over. the drought is over. And I felt like there was a shift that for each and every, every believer here and for us and for Seattle, that there is something stirring and we have to release that word and prophesy that word and believe that word and bring it I mean like it's taking that word and saying yes yes yes, yes. 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 the drought is over and when there is a shift in the season that's you, re, you want to be a wise strategist as there is a shift in the glory. <laughs> and, um, so, this is, I believe, for every ministry here, for every pastor, every church, for every household who have been waiting, that I hear the sound of abundance of rain. And there is a breakthrough for people who need to be, glory to God. 
And as there is a shift, there is, it's an important time to take note that there is a shift and I want to do something in it. And I remember, uh, Steve, Steve, glory to God. <laughs> These are prophetic women. <laughs> that, <laughs> yes, Lord, that is, amen. That, <laughs> Steve was, where we had, we, we worshiped last two weeks ago at our headquarters, Charlotte. I remember Bonnie and I moved to that area uh, 24 years ago when Derek Prince moved to Jerusalem. <laughs> The Lord said, we, while we were serving him, we stayed in South Florida. But as he went to Jerusalem, he said it, it was time for us. There was a change. And we were going to go. And we had a letter of request from about more than 35 pastors from Charlotte, North Carolina, saying, we heard you may be thinking of moving across from where you are. We believe God said, for us to invite you to come, that we need the apostolic blessing in the city for you to come. So Bonnie and I considered it and felt like we were to move there. And as we came there, I just I felt like as I'm declaring this, drought is over. Amen. That as you change it, change, as you change, sense a change in the season. As we landed in Charlotte, one of the ladies that we had heard about was a precious African-American sister who you just met, who was starting a house of restoration for people, former drug addicts, and she would rescue them and provide a shelter for them and restore the help restore their lives. So as we landed there. The Lord quickened for us as there was a, we were changing our season, that we needed to seed into that season. That how you begin is very important. You begin in faith. And one of the special things that every believer can do is so into the glory at that shifting time. And so I remember I, I the move had taken a lot of our financial reservoir. I said, how much, how much is left? They said, $12,000. I said, already? We're going to take the whole shebang. And so it into this lady's ministry. So, and Bonnie is more dangerous than I am. It's, so I feel like God says 5000 I believe the Lord says double it. And <laughs> she's awesome. She's, I'm glad I'm married to her. <laughs> so anyway, we gave all we had. Then there were a chain of events. And we needed a place to worship. And we were watching and praying all night. And we saw this property that became available that was some of you may remember the PTL old PTL and there was a portion available about 27 acres with buildings on it and the bankers owned it they said we saw watchtowers and I said that's the watch of the Lord headquarters we gonna we want to buy that they said well if you can come up with 154,000 by Thursday. We said, how, many, <laughs> how much do we have? $500. And by the end of the week, we needed $154,000. The day before, on Wednesday, I got a registered mail from Geneva, Switzerland. 
I said, who do I know in Geneva? Nobody. And uh, I opened uh, the mail. And inside, there was a note from an attorney saying, there's a lady that got healed under your ministry in Jerusalem. And the Lord told her to bless you. Now open the other part of the envelope and inside was a cashier's check for $154,000. And that's how we bought the present property. And the Lord said, remember that seed? It multiplied. So tonight, I want, before I finish what the Lord has put on my heart, I want us to de- take a special offering for the drought is over. Amen. So I want you to think of what you want to sow. Tell your neighbor, the drought is over. And you want make your checks out to SRC Seattle Revival Center and uh, you could also give by you text to give and they'll have the information if you're watching on the web or on the Re- Seattle Revival Center app SRC okay I want you to hold it up in a moment. We're going to declare prophetically the drought is over. So let's put a seed in tonight for drought breaking seed. Hallelujah. Give the envelope to your now neighbor. So the drought is over. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I hear the sound in the glory. I hear the sound of harvest glory. I hear The sound of the Lord. Let your ears be open. Okay. Is your offering ready? Hold it up. If your neighbor, your neighbor may be your husband. If he's not holding up something, give him a, give him something. I want every person not to miss it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wave it to the Lord. Say, the drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. Hallelujah. So, by the way, I had this word. The Lord, I mean, it's flooded over me. The end of June. I was in Ashland. Doing the revival camp meeting. And there were a whole bunch of pastors. And I was pointing to them. The drought, I said, declaring. The drought is over. And there was a brother named uh, Steve. Kamoki from Nakuru, Kenya. And Nakuru, Kenya was in, in drought, has been. He said, the drought is over. He said, the drought is over. So he, a couple of hours later, he phoned Nakuru, Kenya. He said, I got a word, the drought is over. And his family said, about an hour ago, 
the rain started in Nakuru, Kenya. The drought broke right there. So there is no distance in the spirit. You may have a family member. How many of you, your son or daughter or someone in your family needs a job or needs a financial breakthrough? Raise your hand. Well, we're going to, you have this, it's Steve, what was his last name? Huh? Macquarie. Yes. So that's Steve Macquarie. And then he sent me three weeks later the result of the rain. <laughs> All right. Now, wave it again. Say, the drought is over. Glory to God. All right. We got baskets here. Let's celebrate, Steve. Oh, the floodgates of heaven are open. Let it rain. Let it rain. Yeah. Oh, the floodgates of heaven are open. Let it rain. And I will lay hands. I'll lay hands on the. Bring that other one. Just bring it up here for a moment. Don't go away. Father, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Hold it. Father, we just bless. Stretch your hand out towards this here. Hold this. declare the drought is over we thank you revival glory come to each family break through any shadow any curse broken the blessing the overflow of the glory be here in Jesus name you know Lord glory thank you Lord in Jesus name Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. The drought is over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know why I'm thinking of several things from Africa right now. I don't know. It's just kind of quickened to me. But as I was laying hands, I felt like this the glory was touching members of our family. All right? And that's 
um, it reminded me one of the cabinet ministers in Ivory Coast, I remember, Jibu, uh, what's his capital? I forget, Ivory Coast, Abidjan. And he was in the cabinet. They came during their, my service, and the whole family was crying, and I, I, I was, they were getting emotional. I said, What's happening? And so I said, What's wrong? He said, We are praying. We're so upset that we have lost our daughter. I said, what's, Tell me what's happening. They said, We sent our daughter Angela to the French speaking, so that sent to Paris, France, to the Ecole, to the college. But instead, she had gotten into drugs, and now she had been in, being used as a prostitute by people and uh, they had not heard from her for five years and they were holding her picture and they're crying. I said, stop crying. Give me that picture. I put my hand on it. I said, angel of the Lord, we claim Angela for the kingdom of God. You foul oppression be gone from her in the name of Jesus. Lord, restore her to her family. And they came the next day. They were laughing, smiling. They said, five hours after you prayed, we got a call from Angela from Paris, France. And something came off her eyes. And she said, Papa, send me a ticket. I want to come back home. And it was God delivered us. So I told the angel, why did it take you five hours? But in that context, then, I want to share some final thoughts from the Word of God about the drought breaking, but then our enforcing the power and the effectiveness of the authority of the name of Jesus and declaring, declaring our families, declaring our cities that the authority of Jesus is extended, that we are pleading the blood of Jesus. It is important, therefore, that as we come into the revelation of the blood, that you apply it then and continue to apply it. They overcame the end time saints. They overcame the enemy and the accuser by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So, we, God, has helped us overcome. We have overcome today. But we keep overcoming. Enforcing the authority of the blood of Jesus. And the blood is always speaking on our behalf. The blood is always speaking on the behalf of our children. And the blood is speaking mercy and grace and deliverance. For even various parts of our regions, of our nation, over cities. Some of you may remember, I think Pastor Bonnie shared with you that, you know, it's a whole new, a whole new different thought. I won't finish it too much, but we had an incident in October, at the end of October in our city in Charlotte, where there were whole hundreds of people were coming, going to come out from outside and stir up the city so it would go on fire and race division all kinds of anger and stuff and in the midst of it we felt like we had the anointing and the authority to go in the middle of the rioting and all of that and say not in our city in Jesus name you are not going to set our city on fire we want to spread the love of Jesus. And we sent our intercessors. You probably saw the interview with uh, Pastor Bonnie on Fox News. But that is, we needed to not be still, but show up and with great love. I mean, we started singing worship songs in the middle of the rioters. And uh, the watchmen and the intercessors showed up. And as we sang the praises of the name of Jesus right in the middle 
shalom started descending on the city. And by the next day, the riot stopped. I mean, it was amazing what we saw. So we are, it is not something that it's something that happened way in the past. The Lord is actively involved with us individually and corporately. So we bring through the blood of Jesus then the power of his name. There is a scripture I want to give you. It says um, um, in Galatians 3, 13 and 14, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, as we say the drought is over, we can also say, therefore, that through the finished work of Jesus, Christ breaks every curse. And the blessing of Abraham is coming on me and my family. Me and my church. Say the blessing of Abraham is mine. Through the blood of Jesus. And we have to enforce, have the consciousness of this. And uh, we started learning about the reality of this. That it's, it's not just good scripture. And remember I began by sharing Ephesians 3 that God wants us to know his love and all that it means. Not just here head knowledge, but experiencing it and living it on a daily basis, basis on a practical basis. It's not some kind of religious thing only. It is nitty gritty. It brings people who are dying out of comas. It restores people. Um, Steve was with me and so was I. <clears throat> and then this two weeks ago when we had a gathering in Charlotte and they met a young lady. Her name is Cassie. And uh, her mother had up an awesome, great strategic prophetic ministry in Chicago. And several years ago, her daughter, Cassie, was tragically molested. In, and it was a, so drastic and uh, shattering that she couldn't be restored in a way. But, I mean, she had to be institutionalized. Because it broke her emotionally and mentally. So they had to, often, day after day, they would have to tie her up in the institution because she wanted to commit suicide. And I happened to be there when the police had brought her to see her mother, I think it once a month. And she ran away from the police and in the, this 18, 20 story hotel, she was found a way to try to jump from the 18th floor. And uh, they got her in time. They were going to take her to the institution back. And she said, uh, her mother said, let her come and just sense being the anointing like you have, worship the Lord. And they were worshiping. I didn't know anything about it. And she was out and then I was preaching. And the moment that they brought the young lady in, I had a word. I said, there's a young lady here. She's trying to kill herself. Come up. God's going to deliver you. And she had not let any men lay hands on her for about two years. And she came up and I laid hands on her. And that oppression and the spirit of suicide and depression 
left her instantly. Now, she went back to school. The glory remained on her and started such a work of restoration. She became a presidential scholar. She got her degree in counseling. She went to China, started training hundreds and then thousands of Chinese. And now she's in the process where they're about to put several million Chinese souls and the churches that are involved there under her care she's going to oversee major work of the Lord in millions of Chinese this young girl who was going to be destroyed by the enemy when we say Christ has redeemed us from the curse that the blessing of Abraham and we saw this young lady last week two, I mean two weeks ago and see the potential that that my prayer tonight is that you each of you reach your full potential that it is and that our children fulfill their destiny where where they have been some of you stood up where you need it. We need a prayer that the children would be restored from addictions and all of that. But I want to tell you, you haven't seen anything yet. You are not only going to see them be healed and delivered, but they are going to come into their full destiny and calling. So, it says, that Christ has redeemed us from the curse so may we may receive the blessing of Abraham say I want to receive the blessing of Abraham um, I want to pray for you in a moment so I was we were both brother Derek Prince and I were we were together learning about of course I was the young disciple um, about blessing and curse. And he would, <laughs> as usual, he would let me do the healing service. And so, while I was doing, it's in uh, Munilunga, Zambia. As I was praying, the Lord told me that there was uh, some women who were praying for children to bless them. So I said, how many of you women here want a baby? 500 women came up who couldn't have children. And I said, Lord, what do I do? The Lord said, don't pray for, pray for them yet. I said, why? said because they are under a curse I didn't understand I asked those ladies how many of you have gone to a sorcerer or witch doctor to get a baby every one of them sorcerers are very strong in that part of them. I said we're going to pray to break this curse and then I will release the blessing. Well, we went the next year also, same place. And one of the pastors came to me and told me, Pastor Mahesh, do you remember praying for all those women? I said, yes. He said, 30 of those women came from my village. I just want to report to you that 29 of those women have babies now. And the 30th is pregnant. And I realized, this is for real, that Christ 
has broken the curse that we may receive the blessing. Tonight I want you to receive the blessing for you and your family. Say, I want the blessing. So, remember that it is the full work of Calvary that helps bring the blessing. That the curse is broken on the authority of the name of Jesus. And so, what I want to do for us tonight is I, I want, in a moment, pray for any shadow of a curse to be broken over you. I want to say, I felt like the Lord told me that tonight, that as we declared the drought was over, that there is a new surge, there is an authority to release the blessing and to receive, release the blessing over us, over our families and our children, and that the shadows of the curse are broken. When there is an ongoing shadow that you cannot explain, that makes people have continuous debts that cannot be broken. When there is cycle of miscarriages or a cycle of ongoing divorce, where there are these kind of shadows or infirmities that cannot be explained, I learn on the field that these are the shadows of a curse, that there is reason why Galatians repeats and Christ emphasizing it, underlining it. Jesus broke the curse and forced it over your family. That you can tell the devil, devil, you cannot put any curses in my family line. The, the blood has come. The blood is there. The curse is broken. So, right now, what I want to do is I'm going to let you stand on behalf of yourself and your family. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And we are going to I want to underline, just focus. There were seven levels of humbling himself Jesus went through. There were seven levels where he shed his blood. The Lord began as the intense intercession in Luke 22, he sweated drops of blood. Matthew 26, he was struck on his face and started bleeding from his face. Isaiah 50, his hair was plucked out and he bled. Then number four, he was scourged on his back, so it bled, his whole back bled. And then Matthew 27, they put a crown of thorns. See, all of this, we want to get it as a revelation and re receive it because the, we are going to plead the blood over any kind of mental oppression, of depression, of schizophrenia, all of that. As we enforce the power of the blood, you will see deliverance come. The church has become somewhat static and I would say almost lazy in enforcing the power of the blood and I see us often many of us have stayed at level one and there are seven levels of deliverance seven levels of blessing and often we stay at level one and I want you to go to the next level and the next level of provision the next level of signs and wonders say I'm going to the next level so you find as a crown of thorns came that there is no place for you to have anxiety and worry. 
no place for you to have mental oppression or depression or I mean I'm not saying don't take the pills but I want to tell you that there is deliverance for all of these oppressions through the blood of Jesus say through the blood of Jesus I am set free number six he was crucified blood came from his hands and his feet and then John 19 a pierce came, a spear came and pierced his side and the blood came out from his heart chambers and all of this should it is the power of this the awesomeness of what he went through the son of God and we are going to enforce that that authority that's in the blood of Jesus amen, amen. glory to God all right raise your hands and then I, I want you to think of which specific member of your family needs deliverance from anxiety or they need to have an infirmity or someone has got cancer we are going to enforce this and say the glory of the Lord is delivering members of my family and loved ones in the body of Christ all right raise your hands say after me I proclaim, I proclaim that Jesus Christ has redeemed me redeemed us redeemed my family from every curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree in the name of Jesus Christ I now bring the finished work of the cross, the blessing of Calvary, his death, his blood, his resurrection, his empty tomb, his authority, his love, his power, his dominion, in the name of Jesus Christ. I break, I break any curse, any curse every curse, every curse any, shadow any shadow over me, over, me, over my family. Over in, the in the name of Jesus, these shadows are going. Shadows are going. My, family my family is set free from these curses. From these curses. They have no power they over us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Any, curse, Any curse tormenting my family. I break this curse through the blood of Jesus. Sickness, addiction, depression, anxiety, rejection. I break them away from my family. I thank you. For Calvary. for Calvary. I thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord for, your for your precious blood. These curses are broken. These curses are broken. And I thank you. I, thank I, you. Declare, I declare me and my family, and my family are free. Are free. 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 In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give us a big shout. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, keep your hands raised. Glory to God. Now, if there is anyone in pain, wave your hand. Any kind of back pain. There's someone who is getting ongoing pain in your knee. Your knee joint is hurting. Wave your hand right now. Yeah. The Lord, I believe, giving some new knees. Thank you. 
if you see your neighbor waving their hand, where the knees are concerned, wave your hand again. So keep your eye open where your neighbor is. All right. In fact, go, some of you, one or two, go there and lay a hand, if they don't mind, on their knees right now. There's someone, your pat, you needed either new knee or cartilage. And there's someone, either you or your loved one, you have hepatitis. But the doctor is see you're battling some battling some kind of hepatitis. Where are you? Yeah. Lay a hand, someone go up there and lay hands on that precious lady right now. Thank you, Lord. Is there someone else? Over there. Thank you, Lord. Now try your knee, see if it's better. If you feel like the knee is better, wave your hand at me. The pain is going. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, walk some more. Walk. Thank you, Lord. Is that better? Hallelujah. Thank you. Wave your hand at me if you feel like it's, it's getting better. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And there is a man here, your shoulder, rotator cuff. Where are you? Yeah, now go, someone lay hands on those shoulders now. There is some tumors God is removing from the female area. Praise the Lord. The lady who has got numbness in your fingers, the fingers are numb. Is, yeah, just keep your hands raised right there. At the, yeah, summon go at the back. Just put your hand on her and bless her. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Someone either watching now or on the web, you're getting healed of breast cancer now. You'll be in remission. We have had many of this in the last two years. Tremendous numbers of remissions from cancer. All right. Now pay attention to me, all of you guys. Just stand. Thank you, Father. Just, just raise your hand, start thanking him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Remember that song? It was whole song. He, he touched me. Give me a key. He touched me. Touched me. He touched me. 
One more thing, it's important. The Lord said, There are a uh, couple of people here, there may be several, that you've never had an experience of receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit with a prayer language. If you've never had a prayer language before, just raise your hands and say, Pastor, I need I need the full zap. Don't be afraid don't be shy yeah over oh, there who else glory to God who else bless you God, over there bless you now that's one of the most life-changing experiences hallelujah if you don't mind come up here and line up here This was for me as important for me as receiving Jesus. Because this it will release the power of God over your lives. Yeah. Line up just one line if you don't mind. And the helpers can be behind them, but the healing team, the helpers, you can stand behind them. Thank you, Father. And a couple of you need healing, okay? And that as you receive the Holy Spirit, the Lord's going to heal you also, okay? He's going through the angel. He's standing right behind you, baby. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to lead them in a prayer, but I want all of you to help them pray, okay? So out loud. Now remember, I started talking about Africa. I'm used to Africa. In Africa, by the way, I was born in Africa. I was, I'm from Kenya. So, yeah. There are people from Kenya back there. Yes. So now I'm, in a, I'm an American citizen. So I'm African-American. I'm also, my parents were from India. So I'm now an American citizen, so I'm American Indian. So I'm going to ask for some kind of government program. And if not, I'm going to open a casino. The Holy Spirit makes me laugh and he gets me drunk. And he's going to get zappy, okay? And get you drunk and full of joy and the healing glory. It's going to be touching you, okay, sweetheart? What's your name? Margaret? Okay. Praise God. What's your name? Huh? Jennifer. What's your name, baby? Elena. What's your name? Melanie? Great. Welcome, all of you. Praise God. Now, I'm going to lead you all in prayer. You stretch your hand out towards these precious sons and daughters of the King of Glory. But you pray with me. And you guys pray with all your heart. And then the helpers, you can help me pray. Help these guys. Okay, say after me. Lord Jesus Christ. I want louder. More volume. And those watching us on the World Wide Web, you also receive a fresh. How many of you can do with a fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost? So all of us, we want another dose. I want to go to the next level. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. I believe. You died, for my sins. you died for my sins on the cross. On the cross. You, were you were buried. 
you were resurrected on the third day. I do receive you as my Savior, my King, my Lord, my God. Now, Lord Jesus, I am thirsty for more of you. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit, with the gift of a prayer language. Lord, I'm thirsty. Fill me now. By faith, I open my mouth and I drink in your Holy Spirit. Now open your mouth for a moment. I am drinking. If I, When I drink, I have to open my mouth. You are drinking the living waters. By faith, Drink it, drink it, drink it. Araba Shana Matira. And the helpers, lay your hands a little bit gently on the people. The healing team, come up here, help. Lay hands on these guys too. Let's sing to him. Yeah, you are getting it, honey. Let it come. Let it come. Yeah, stand behind her and let her come. Let it come. Araba Praise you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. Put your hand on his head a little bit more. Yeah. Pray. And she's going to receive. Put your hand on her tummy right now, too. Thank you, Lord. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yeah. She got the prayer language. Yeah. yeah. You will make the words. It's just right there. Believe me, you're not making it up. In this atmosphere of glory. Back there. Let's just worship him for a moment. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. It is wonderful. in English anymore. Just open your mouth by faith. Sing to him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, yes, yes. And put your hand on her forehead right now. And let the healing glory touch you now. Thank you, Father. Put your hand on her head right there, on her forehead. Yes. Let that healing glory. Thank you, Father. That's one of the things, by the way. When the Holy Spirit comes and you've needed this drink all your life, tears will start flowing. People will start crying. It's all right. That's fine. It's a wonderful spirit. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Woo! Yes. Some of you may want to go home. Check your teeth. I believe God's giving some gold teeth here tonight. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Now put your hands up. Give him a big clap offering. Say, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise you, Lord. What is it? Hold on. I'm sorry. I'll pray for her if she says yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you ten minutes. I'm going to be wherever they put me for signing books. All right. You can stick around here for a moment and worship, sing, sing a couple of songs. You're going to do take over. Let's just say a big thank you to Mahesh and I'm Pastor Mahesh for ministering. Wasn't it fantastic? My goodness, thank you so much. It was so much fun. They're going to be helping Mahesh out. Um, make sure that you um, uh, buy all his books. Get them all signed. Buy all the CDs. Get, get everything so that you can get an impartation. Amen? Absolutely. Absolutely. Where well, at the book table? Um, out there. These, there, these guys so know. They'll they, find me. Absolutely. They'll find you. <laughs> hey, love you guys. If you're watching online, love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow with uh, Charlie Champ, 10 a.m. All right. Good night, everyone. <laughs>